Becky? Great, thank you, Cindy. And thank you everybody for joining in and sticking around until the very end. Um, I do have some information to share with you guys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start to dive in here and start with, uh, let me see here. There we go, you guys already know who I am. So I'm gonna proceed past these and actually start to look at our roadmap here. So this is an updated roadmap based off of what is coming soon for release and what we have planned out um, for the foreseeable future. And so as Dan mentioned, the version that he was showing today for public access and um, some of the upcoming releases are coming very, very, very soon. Um, I don't know how much more I can say beyond that, but just be prepared. Um, everything uh, is, coming along great. And those of you who are using our native apps, while this was going on, you may have noticed that a email probably hit your inbox announcing a, a new release there as well. So make sure to check that out. There's some fixes there that I know people have been looking for, as well as some new enhancements to help with usability of the software. And so in terms of what you're gonna see coming soon in our next upcoming release, I wanted to hit on a few highlights of those in the next couple of slides. So I'm not going to dive into a whole bunch of detail there. There's um, a few items that I just think are very relevant and kind of high priorities for everybody to be checking out and paying some attention to. I also want to point out after this um, webinar and I think going into in the next couple of weeks and then again in October, we'll be having some follow-up webinars uh, for our clients to be going through and actually diving into the new functionality that's coming out in the upcoming release. At that point, we'll have already hit the streets. You guys will have access to it, and we'll be having the SMEs actually walking through some of that new functionality and getting into some of the details for you. And because there is so much new content, uh, we are gonna break it apart into two separate webinars so that we don't uh, keep you guys on an all-day webinar just going over all the great new CityWorks stuff. And so hopefully you'll have some time to dive into what's going in to AMS as well as PLL and looking at some of the functionality around the native apps and some of the other HTML5 apps that we've been working on and really looking to provide more value for all of our clients. So while I have everybody on the line, I just want to kind of go through uh, what we're looking at beyond this upcoming uh, release that we have planned. And that's really diving into some some bigger initiatives here, really looking to provide you guys with more technology and more tools to really help you operate more efficiently and more strategically and have CityWorks be a key part of that within your organizations and your plans. So you'll see here a few things. Um, there are several that I'm really excited about. Uh, one, support and integration with RGS Urban from Esri. And so uh, some of that functionality that Dan was showing is a natural tie-in from public access to really start to dive into how we can support that process uh, for planning, development, and how that can be a tool set within our organizations tying into the CityWorks technology that they already have in place. And then diving into some more tool sets here to actually start to help you guys with the management of projects and budgets and contracts. That functionality um, could really use a new update and some new design and look to it really to make things more functional and more valuable again for you. And then as we start to look beyond that, we're talking about 3D and getting into that functionality to really start expand what we've already been working on um, that you've seen a few times if you tied into the webinar that we did with Esri with the ArcGIS Indoors team and Trimble to look at how CityWorks is integrated and supporting that functionality. We are working to take it one step further and move beyond 2D, not just for indoors, but also just to support generally that vertical asset visualization, um, some arc scenes and getting into some of that technology that our clients are really already investing in and being able to support the growth of the, your organizations. And so with that, I'm actually gonna jump in. I know you guys have been very patient. You've stayed on the line for a while here or over time. So I'm gonna be uh, pretty concise. So as we go through here, you can see this is just some screenshots of what we're doing with indoors. We do have integration uh, through the native apps and through the web app. And so this basically, um, for those sites who are already using CityWorks for SSO, you're able to actually go ahead and take that and extend it across what you're doing to really pull indoors in as part of your CityWorks solution for vertical asset management and getting into those facilities. And so if you're in indoors, you'll see here, um, I've got some symbology that's shown here on the indoors screenshots. And that's actually CityWorks symbology. So carrying through that same symbology that users are accustomed to and familiar with when they're in CityWorks, having that exposed and indoors to have that continuity for everybody while they're out in the field. And essentially indoors is working as an inbox for them. So the indoors app allows them to see where those CityWorks assignments are taking place. 
using the indoors technology for routing, they can route to those locations, which is especially beneficial when you're dealing with some of these uh, larger campuses um, or even airports uh, and getting into some of those really distributed assets and buildings. And then from there, there's the ability to open up your CityWorks activities and assignments, view some details, but also create new activities. And during that process, it's launching you into CityWorks, um, already using your authentication and your login information that was already provided to indoors to really make it a seamless handoff. And so from there, you're able to go ahead and get into the processing, doing your regular work activities, getting into the meat of equipment, labor, material assignments, and some of those other new fields that we've actually been working to provide across the native apps to get, allow more tactical reporting and uh, roll-up activities that are taking place. And this is actually just an example of a really cool project that's already in the way. Some of our clients, uh, City of Raleigh, North Carolina, they're already moving ahead with indoors and CityWorks. And this is an example that they provided us of their treatment plans um, already underway in indoors and how they're looking to bring that information in and start to represent it. And then applying CityWorks to get into the asset management and operations of these assets. And then along those same lines, um, as we're looking at some of this functionality with vertical assets, and even just in general for those field users, uh, being able to quickly identify that asset that you're working with, whether it's in the plant or the field, and being able to quickly bring up information about it, create new activities. We know sometimes some of those IDs um, that are associated with those assets aren't always um, you know, available off the top of your head. Likewise, it's not um, always something depending on the number of assets that you're dealing with to quickly pull up on the map. So we also want to be able to provide barcode functionality. And this is now available in both um, well, it will be available, I should say, coming soon in both uh, Respond and the native apps. And so from here, organizations and users can go through, click on that native device camera, and that's just a little icon that we now have exposed there, scan a barcode, and from there, it pulls up all the asset information. You can see the previous work history, um, any current activities that are assigned, attributes, and you can also go ahead and use that once that asset's there, it's selected, and you can start creating new activities against it. So. If you're in a plant and you're just walking up to a pump, you can go ahead and scan that information out in the field, scan a hydrant, and be able to immediately go ahead and start that whole process to view, you know, when's the last time that somebody was out here and was actually doing work against this asset? I need to create a new activity and just be able to go ahead and do it on the fly. And then asset curves. Those are also coming very soon in Operational Insights. And this is really allowing organizations to start to visualize based off of real-time data. This isn't, um, you know, this isn't modeling that's taking place. We're allowing you to go ahead and actually pull that information in from your GIS that's going through and creating your risk strategy. So your probability of failure, consequence of failure, and business risk. Likewise, pulling in information from the maintenance strategies that you have established for your infrastructure. And then also looking at the GIS data and using that information together to see actually what that expected useful life is for your assets. And this is allowing you to actually take in, you know, real account data. So when we're talking about this in the maintenance strategy, being able to identify how different activities over time have modified how this useful life uh, performs or behaves and is represented here, which activities move the dial, um, which activities can be modified, and maybe some of those attributes that can be enhanced based off of activities going forward in the future in terms of the condition of the infrastructure as well. So this is something that you can start to dive into more. Um, this is something that will be covered in the upcoming webinar as well. Denora is the one who's um, overseeing this. Many of you are already familiar with her if you've been looking at operational insights or just around CityWorks for a while in general. Um, and so she'll be covering this in more detail and is also available if there's any in-depth questions. And then dashboards. So with the dashboards, we've been working for a while here to go ahead and actually start providing more tools to make them more customizable. Um, dashboards are something that we really are striving to provide um, to make them more flexible and really meet the needs for reporting and visualization based off of each organization and then each group. And so from here, I just want to be able to go through and show that I can come in now to dashboards and I'm actually able to go ahead and start to modify what the look and feel is here. Um, the color scheme, background colors, uh, panel colors, font colors, all of this is customizable. So I can have a uh, more pronounced widgets for some of these items here uh, than I do maybe the other ones just based off of if this is something that's a red flag or a high priority that I really want to pull attention to visually, I'm able to go ahead and make that pronouncement um, 
from here, I'm actually going to go ahead and make it very um, pronounced and make sure it's very uh, eye catching in terms of some of the colors that are going to be displayed here to really pull out that widget and that text here. So it's something that um, stands out against the other information that's being displayed here in the dashboard. And so these are the kind of tools that we want to provide to really make it more flexible, um, really make these dashboards yours and allow organizations the ability to um, design these. And it can be on a user basis, group basis, or across the organization as well. And so that's really um, all I was planning on diving in and sharing here today. But again, we will be following up with more webinars uh, specifically tied to the upcoming release, following the actual release. And from there, we'll be able to dive into more details and so make sure to stay tuned for those uh, registration emails as they're coming out and to be sure to join. We look forward to having you guys again.